And like he was saying, Christ in the most high is our head. Yeah, it might be cold for right now, but guess what? This for your soul and salvation. You feel me? Your soul and salvation, it should be worth, you know what I'm saying? It shouldn't be worth a hood just being on my head. You know what I'm saying? It might, yeah, it might be cold. We all got hoods on our uh, sweater, but guess what? We know the Bible is coming out, so we can't what? We can't have our head covered. So they, they're going to show you right there. When you take your hood off, guess what they're going to show? They're going to show you they're gonna show you have discipline, and they're going to show you uh, they're going to show you your first steps of repentance. Because repentance means return. And what we have to do, we have to return back to God's laws. Let me ask you something. You celebrate Christmas? Give me a wisdom of Solomon chapter 14. Start at verse 6. Bring it out. Because we know our people just starting to learn the Bible. And it takes time for our people to start to understand everything that's in this Bible. Listen to this right fast. Wisdom of Solomon 14. Give me verse 6. Yeah, start at verse 6. The book of Wisdom of Solomon right. chapter 14 and verse 6. For in the old time also when the proud giants perished. 14, 16, 16 14 and 16. Yeah, 14 to 16. The book of Wisdom of Sodom, chapter 14, verse 16. Yes, it is. Thus, in process of time. It says, thus, in process of time. As time goes on, read. An ungodly custom. It says, ungodly custom. An ungodly custom. Come on. Grown strong was kept as a law. It says has grown strong. Christmas is a ungodly custom. Has grown strong all around the world and have deceived our people into thinking Jesus Christ was born on Christmas Day when it is a bald-faced lie. Christ was born around the springtime. Keep reading. And graven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. It says graven images was worshipped by the commandments of kings. Now you just heard one graven image. was this right here? This right here. It says an ungodly custom. That ungodly custom is Christmas. It has grown so strong that our people are going, is going to that pawn shop. I know I've seen at least 10 people go over there and pawn 10 flat screens. And they doing it all for Christmas, an ungodly custom that has grown strong in America. I have seen 10 people over there at the pawn shop with 10 flat screens. And what you think they going to pawn that flat screen for? Christmas. But it's a what? A ungodly custom. Give me Jeremiah 10. Hold it. We're going to come back and go to Jeremiah 10 verse 1. You see that right there? That means we have been smite with madness. You remember when we were reading in Deuteronomy chapter 28, the curses that have came upon our people? One of them is madness. Blindness and madness. And look at him. Read. The book of Jeremiah. Chapter 10, verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. So you got to understand the Most High always going to be speaking to these people on this side. We are the Most High God chosen people. We are the greatest people on the planet earth. Read. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. First off, we got to understand it says learn not the way of the heathen. Learn not the way of the heathen. Come on. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them, for the custom of the of the people are vain. You heard that? For the custom. There go that word again. For the custom of the people are vain. Meaning this custom right here is a lie. Read. For one cutteth the tree, cutteth a tree out of the forest. It says for one cutteth a tree out of the forest. So it, with, during Christmas, what do they have to do? Back then they had to do what? Go to the forest and get trees and cut them down. But in America, the Esau, your oppressor, has gotten so smart that he got the trees artificially made for you with a stand. So this is talking about what? Christmas. It gonna show. It gonna tell you even more in detail. Come on. For the custom of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with an axe. Uh -huh. They deck it with silver and gold. What they deck the Christmas tree with? Silver and gold. Ornaments. 
They got so small they start to put different things on it. Ornaments. Guess what our people love to put on them? Our people can have a big ass Christmas tree in their house and there's only going to be two things on it. A star and some candy canes. A star and some candy canes. It says silver and gold. They, you heard of the song Silver and Gold, right? You heard that song. So everything that everything that comes at this Bible, they push to our people this country every to it. The Bible teach you not to celebrate Christmas, but what our oppressor tell us: Christmas is one of the, one of the best holidays. You give your kids gifts. And guess what we celebrating right now? The feast of dedication, where we got to give our kids eight days of gifts. And that's the feast Christ kept. Give me John 10 and 22. Okay. We're going to see if Christ kept the feast of dedication, or we're going to see if Christ kept Christmas. How many of you out here think Christ, 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 Jesus Christ kept Christmas? Listen to this. Read John chapter 10 and verse 22. The book of John chapter 10 and verse 22. And it was at Jerusalem. It says, and it was at Jerusalem, because that's our homeland. Jerusalem is the motherland. Not Africa. Come on. The feast of the dedication. The feast of what? The feast of the dedication. It says Christmas. Dedication. The feast of dedication. 22 and 5. Remember it says the truth shall set you free. Truth is God's laws. Only thing going to set the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans free in the land of their captivity if they start to keep the laws of God. That's right. That's what we have to do as a nation of people. And not as just individuals. God judged us by a nation. Because not just one person went into slavery, the whole nation, all 12 tribes went into slavery. For us breaking God's commandments. What you got, uh, brother? You wanna know why we don't take money on the Sabbath day? Why we don't take money on the Sabbath? Give me Nehemiah 10 31. Give me Nehemiah 10 verse 31. This is edification. We can teach you. Give me Nehemiah 10 verse 31. Because during the, on the Sabbath day, you have you have you have things to go by on the Sabbath. No buying, no selling, no cooking, no working. Like today, we don't supposed to be doing none of that. But if we knew that as a nation of people, guess what? All these businesses will be closed down. And guess who would be hurting no money? That pawn shop would have been missing them 10 flat screen TVs. That uh brooding, that brooding wig store, guess what? It wouldn't be open today. Family at all it wouldn't be open today. The nail shop wouldn't be open today. Because guess who flocking to those stores over there? Our people. That's right. Our people. Read. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 10 and verse 31. And if the people of the land bring where are you heard that? If the people of the land, read. Bring anywhere or any visuals on the seventh day. It says anywhere or any visuals like people want to give us money. There's visuals. Read. On the seventh day. And it's the seventh day. Come on. To sell that, that we would not buy it. That we would not buy it. Of them on the Sabbath. Or them on the seventh day. Why? Because there's no buying and no selling on God's Sabbath. That's right. You a cowboy friend? So now, watch this. Go from now to do the rum. Go to do the rum. Do the rum. Do the rum. Hey, us knowing about the Cowboys record, guess what they're going to do? That ain't going to help none. That ain't going to help none. Because guess what? The white man owned the, the Cowboys. Come back over here, Nick. Come back over and get you some, uh, and ask, ask some questions, sister. So now, give me Deuteronomy 22 and verse, verse 5. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So the mo like I said, the white man has changed all laws. You, if, you, if you notice, why are our women in pants? Our women in pants because the, the, the white man changed everything. Just like what else? He, he didn't change God's laws. He changed your mindset on how to read and understand the Bible. That's the only thing our enemy has done. So we don't supposed to buy ourselves on the Sabbath. We don't supposed to cook or nothing like that on God's Sabbath. So what do we supposed to be doing? We supposed to be serving God. Give me Deuteronomy 10 and 12. Give me Deuteronomy 10 and 12. Give me Deuteronomy 10 verse 12. 
Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. And now, Israel, what doeth the Lord thy God require of thee? It says, now, Israel. Israel, like you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, say what's required of us. We got to start to ask ourselves, what's required of me as an Israelite man? Come on. But to fear the Lord thy God. We got to fear the Lord thy God. To walk in all his ways uh -huh. and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. It says to love the Lord thy God with all thy mind and all thy soul. Like he's saying, how do we love God by keeping his commandments? That's what we have to do. Give me Ezekiel chapter 14 verse 6. Because guess what? Christmas is an idol. You, you know them Jesus pieces that these rappers love wearing? Guess what that is? A graven image. That's an idol. That cross that people wear like to wear on their neck. Guess what that is? That's an idol. Read. Yeah, Ezekiel 14 verse 6. Ezekiel 14 verse 6. Come on. The book of Ezekiel chapter 14 verse 6. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel. You hear the Bible? It says, say unto the house of Israel. The house of Israel is the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. The Bible is only talking to us. The Bible is only for us. Come on. Thus saith the Lord God, repent. Do what? Repent. You heard that? Repent. Repent means to return back to God's commandments. Come on. And turn yourselves from your idols. And turn ourselves from our idols. I guess what got our people our idolatry? Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's Eve, all of these pagan holidays, Valentine's Day, birthdays that our people love so much. Oh, it's my birthday. I'm turning 32 tomorrow. I'm going to get 31 cupcakes. I might get 32, one to grow on. So, to hell with Baskin Robbins in their 31 flavors. Nah, uh, uh Give me the Joe. Give me that in Joe, read. The book of Job, chapter 3 and verse 3. Let the day perish wherein I was born. You hear Joe? Joe said, Let the day perish when I was born. Jeremiah 20 and 14. Jeremiah 20 and 14. Then give me Ecclesiastes 7 and uh. 71, uh, I think. Ecclesiastes 71, right? Yeah, give me Ecclesiastes 71, then Jeremiah 20 and 14. Yeah, you're going to get Ecclesiastes 71, Jeremiah 20 and 14. Because our birthdays don't, your birthday don't mean nothing. Your birthday don't mean nothing. When Job kids celebrated their birthday, it was the most high did to him. He killed all seven of Job kids. You put yourself before the most high on your birthday. You put yourself before the most high. You wake up, you like, yeah, this my day. Right. Now this the most high day. Right. <laughs> well, we supposed to be happy on our birthday. You supposed to be happy every day. You want to know why? Because you an Israelite and you God's chosen people. Yes, That's right. supposed to make you happy every day. Right. Happy are we? Because we know what? We know the laws of God. We know the prophecies. We know that our enemies going to get destroyed. Right. And guess what that's going to be? That's going to be our salvation. Right. Your enemy's destruction going to be your salvation. That's right. Read what you got. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7 and verse 1. Come on. A good name is better than a precious ornament. And the day of death. A day of death. Look what he compared it to. A day of death. Come on. Then the day of one's birth. Then the day of one's birth. Because when you die, you don't have to worry about going through nothing else that we going through right now. But when you born, you born into a curse. Want to know how? Give me Deuteronomy 28. It tells you in the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28, 15 through 68 that we were going to be born into a curse. Why? Because we broke the commandments of God and we God's chosen people. That's right. God did not choose every nation on this planet Earth. He only chose you blacks, Hispanics, and you Native Americans. That's right. But you walk around here so high and mighty that you want to be a Negro. You want to be an African American. You want to be a Mexican. When we God chose oh, people. Read, what that, read Deuteronomy chapter 28 and give me verse 19. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 19. Cursed shall thy be when thou comest in, and cursed shall thy be when thou goest out. You heard that? Cursed shall thou be when thou comest in the world, and cursed shall thou be when thou goest out. Meaning a curse, a, that curse gonna still be upon you once you die if you didn't repent for the sins that you was in. Now give me Sir Rock. 
chapter 43, verse 9. Start at verse 8. So I'll put your keys back in. Sir Rock 43 and start at verse 8. Oh, yo, what's it up? 41 and 8. Yeah. Oh, the 41 book of and 8. The, 41 and 8. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 41 and verse 8. Woe unto you, ungodly men. He says, Woe, mean destruction unto you, ungodly men. Come on. Which have forsaken the law of the Most High God. And our people love forsaking the laws of the Most High God. Come on. For if, for if ye increase, it shall be to your destruction. So if you increase it, tons of increasing in your sin, it's going to be to your destruction. Come on. And if ye be born. If you be born, come on. Ye be born to a curse. A curse you be born into. You are born into a curse. Why? Because we did not keep God's commandments. Come on. And if ye die, a curse shall be your portion. And once you die, and if you weren't keeping the commandments of God, guess what? That curse going to be your portion. And people don't understand, we up under the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15 through 68. You blessed Hispanics and Native Americans, you are God's chosen people. We are the Israelites. Let's go back to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14, verse 16. Let's continue to talk about this ungodly custom called Christmas. Let's talk about this ungodly custom called Christmas. Because it is an ungodly custom. Christmas is a stronghold on our people. Christmas is a strong delusion to make you think a fat white man is going to bring our kids some damn gifts. That is a strong delusion. And the only thing going to break that is this Bible. Because we're going to pull down every stronghold with the word of God. That's right. We know ain't no fat white man going to come down your chimney in the hood. Hell, in the hood, we don't have chimneys. That's right. The hell. How the hell he gonna get in my house? I ain't got no chimney. Oh, mama left the back door open. I forgot the Jacksons did a song called Mama Kissing Santa. They call Mama Kissing Santa Claus. I guess everybody out here feeling so jolly. Our people feeling so jolly. We said seen, I seen 10 people go in this pawn shop and pawn 10 TVs. 10 flat screen TVs. Within 45 minutes, why? Because of this ungodly custom that has gone strong in America. Read what you got. 14 to 16. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14 and verse 16. Thus, in process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law. He says an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law. Guess what they tell you every year? Every year, here in the summertime, they promote Christmas. After the 4th of July, after you Negroes get through popping fireworks, guess what they start promoting? Christmas. Christmas. Why? But it can constantly be on your mind. Ain't no fat white man coming to your hood. Ain't no fat white man coming down your chimney with no gifts. The only fat white man coming to your house is called the police. Hey, trust me, the only gifts they bring to you is called handcuffs. That's right. Yeah. They show you right there, our people. We hate each other so much. We, uh, stop, matter of fact, start in verse 12, huh? The Book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14 and verse 12. For the devising of idols. You hear that? For the devising of idols, because our people love being in idolatry. If you ain't worshiping Caesar Bojo, guess who you worshiping? Nicki Minaj, Lil Wayne, T.I., Two Chains. Y'all actually listening to follow a man named Two Chains. Two Chains. Hey, what you think you was in captivity in? Two Chains. That's right. Yeah. One on your wrist and one on your feet. Yeah. And if it went on your wrist, it was around your neck. And y'all follow a rapper named Two Chains. He said, for the devising, the devising of idols, come on. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. You heard that? That's the beginning. That's the beginning of spiritual fornication. Idolatry. Idolatry. That is a stronghold on our people. Peace. And the invention of them. The corruption of life. He says in the invention of them is the corruption of life. Now jump down to verse 16. Thus 
in process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law. It says an, un, it says an ungodly custom was grown strong and kept as a law. It's called Christmas. It's called Christmas. Our people love celebrating Christmas and decorating the tree. Oh no, this thing ain't work. Is it work? Yes. And it's crazy because our people go out, they find all these different gifts, they wrap them up, they put it up on the tree. It's crazy hell because y'all say the gifts come from Santa Claus, but yet you get the little card and say to and from, you put your damn name. Why the hell you just didn't put Santa Claus? To and from. Who is to and who is from? When it's supposed to be for who? A fat white man named Santa. No, it's called Satan. Because it's the devil the Bible speaks of. Yes, That's right. Y'all need to come up out of that stronghold called Christmas. Because guess what it's doing? Guess what it's going to lead to? Because around uh, around probably about the next week or two, guess what? It's going to be a lot of, uh, it's going to be a lot of house break-ins all because of damn Christmas. It's going to be a lot of car break-ins, all because of Christmas. It's going to be a lot of robbing, all because of Christmas. Why? Because that's an ungodly custom that you're supposed to be celebrating. And it's, a, it's grown so strong that our people are going out there and pulling their flat screen TV just to, keep, just to buy their kids' gifts. Sell their body. And sell their body. Oh, girl, I'm just out here for a couple nights. Yeah, you know little Tyrone them need a new basketball goal for Christmas. That's our people's mindset, though. But when it comes to this Bible, y'all say the hell with it. I go to church. My pastor told me on the thing I gotta do is call on the name of Jesus. Now, that ain't the only thing you gotta do. The first thing you need to do is repent and turn from your idols. Thus, in the process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law. And graven images were worshipped by the commandments of King. It says graven images. Seize your bow. Graven images. Seize your bow, young. There are uh, cross that our people love to work. All of these different things. It's graven images. Read. Who men could not honor in presence because they dwelt far off. They took the counterfeit of this of his visits. Drop then go to uh let's go to uh what's kind of make good about you. So the ungodly custom, let's see that ungodly custom. Y'all celebrate Christmas? Do y'all celebrate Christmas? You celebrate Christmas? You celebrate Christmas? You celebrate Christmas? You know you're supposed to, right? It's in the Bible. Give me a reading. The book of Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 1. Listen. Hear ye these words which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Come on. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Don't learn the way of the heathen. Come on. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Come on. For the heathen are dismayed at them. Uh-huh. For the custom, for the ungodly custom that has grown strong over a process of time, read, of the people are vain. That custom is vain, that means it is a lie. Christmas is a bald-faced lie. That's right. right. For one cut a tree out of the forest. They gotta go all the way to the forest and cut the tree, read. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. Uh-huh. They deck it with silver and with gold. They deck that big Christmas tree with silver and gold and all types of ornaments, read. They fasten it with nails and with hammers. Back then you had to fasten it with nails and hammers. Why? Because it, for it wouldn't tilt over. But guess what? They already got the Christmas stand for you. That artificial tree with that artificial stand for it would not move. Come on. That it move not. Read. They are upright as a palm tree. But they use the evergreen tree. Now come on. But speak not. But speak not. Why? They. They must need be born. Because they can't be moved. They got to be carried. Come on. Because they cannot go. Because they can't what? They can't get up and move themselves. Come on. Be not afraid of them. Uh-huh. They, 
For they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. Uh-huh. So now let's go to Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Their ungodly custom has our people right now in debt, credit card debt, not paying their rent, not paying their light bill, all because of Christmas. Christmas is a damn lie. That's, That's right. right. We gonna tell you straight, Christmas is a lie. We celebrating the Feast of Dedication right now. Right. Eight days of gifts we gotta give our kids. Ask your kids would they rather have eight days of gifts or one day of gift giving. <laughs> Ask your kids, eight days of gifts or one day? It's our time we'll wake out of sleep. Read what you got. The book of Colossians. Chapter 2 and verse 8. Come on. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophies and, of men. And that man uh. is your enemy. That man that spoils you through philosophies is your enemy. Right. It's your oppressor. It's your slave master. Come on. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. In vain deceit. Come on. After the traditions of men. After the traditions of man. Come on. After a rudiment of the world. After the rudiments of this world. Read. And not after Christ. There ain't Christmas is not after Christ. That's right, right. Christmas is not after Christ. It's of the devil. It is a man-made pagan holiday. That's right. Where they used to have orgies and give gifts as kids. And trust me, that is an ungodly custom that has grown strong all around the world. All around the world. And now people celebrate it. Why? Because they have no knowledge of the Bible. They have no knowledge of who they are. You want to know why? Give me 2 Maccabees 6. Start at verse 6. 2 Maccabees 6, verse 6. Because we celebrating the Feast of Dedication right now. When we got the temple back and dedicated it to the Most High God. From who? From our oppressor. Which are the Grecians, which are who? The Edomites. They all are the same. Read up. Right. There's no difference. Read. The book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 6 and verse 6. Let's show you what the Greeks did to, to the Israelites. Read. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep seven days. So in Greek time, it wasn't lawful for us to keep the seventh day. Come on. Or ancient feasts. Or uh, any of our ancient feasts, just like now in America. Our people don't keep the seventh, and we don't keep our ancient feast days. Read. Or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. We don't even call ourselves by our biblical names. Why? Because we are being called by, by words. That's right. Read. And in the day of the king's birth. In the day of the king's birth. Because we don't celebrate our birthdays. Our enemies knew that, so they made us celebrate their birthdays. That's right. right. Every month, they were brought by bitter constraint uh -huh. to eat the sacrifice. And when the Feast of Bacchus was kept. The Feast of Bacchus, come on. The Feast of Bacchus was kept. The Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus carry ivy. Uh -huh. Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighboring city. It said it went out a decree unto everybody. Read. Of the heathen by the suggestion of Ptolemy uh -huh. against the Jews. Against the Jews, which are you blacks. Read. That they should observe the same fashion. That's like a mouth. They tell our people that we should observe all day holidays. But when it comes to this Bible, don't worry about it. You ain't got to do it. That's Christ right. came. You can't do that. They tell you to keep Christmas, Thanksgiving, the 4th of July. All of these days you keep. But when it comes to your feast days in this Bible, you do not know anything about them. Why? Because they don't want you to know about them. Read. And be partakers of their sacrifices. And our people love being partakers of their sacrifices or their holidays. Read. And whosoever would not conform themselves to the manner of the Gentiles. Whoever would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles. Read. Should be put to death. Should be what? Put to death. So we had to call ourselves Gentiles. Pick it up. If not, 
we would have got put to death. Three. Then might a man have seen the present misery. That's it. Now go to fuck. There you go. I thought we weren't going to sit there in the day. Every seven we come out here is a funeral. Every seven. It never fails. We come out here, it's a funeral. That is a crying shame. The book of the book of First Maccabees, chapter 4, verse 42. Then we talking about the feast of dedication, which in America they call Hanukkah. The feast of dedication, not Christmas. Who kept the feast of dedication? Jesus the Christ. Read. The book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 5, verse 42. Come on. So he chose priests of blameless conversation. So Mattathias chose priests of blame, of Judas. Maccabees chose priests of blameless conversation. Come on. Such it has pleasure in the law. You have to have pleasure in keeping God law. That's right. Come on. Who cleansed the sanctuary and buried out the defiled stones into an unclean place. Uh-huh. And when and when as they consulted, consulted what to do with the altar of burnt offerings, uh -huh. which was profane, they thought it best to pull it down. Because they did what? They offered swine's flesh. They all had oranges in our temple. They defiled our temple. They defiled the altar. Read. At least this should be a reproach to them. Come on. Because the heathen had defiled it. Wherefore they pulled it down and laid up the stones in the mountain of the temple in a convenient place. Uh -huh. Until there should come a prophet to show what should be done with them. Uh -huh. Then they took whole stones according to the law and built a new altar according to the former. Uh -huh. And made up the sanctuary and the things that were within the temple and hollowed the courts. And they hollowed the courts. That's, what, that's us rebuilding our temple come on they made also new holy vessels they made also new holy vessels come on and into the temple they brought the candlesticks uh -huh. and the altar of burnt offerings and of incense and the table uh-huh and upon the altar they burned incense and the lambs that were upon the candlesticks they light it and they might give light in the temple. So we rebuild in the temple. We finna dedicate the temple back to the most high. Read. Furthermore, they set the loaves upon the table and spread out the veils and finish and finish all the work which they had begun to make. So we finished building the temple. We starting and we finishing building the temple for the most high. We been, we gonna dedicate it back to the most high, read. Now on the five and twentieth day of the ninth month. So this is the ninth month. This is the ninth month. Read. Which is called the month of Kashlu. Because this is called the month of Kashlu. Read. In the hundred fortieth and eighth year. Uh huh. They rose up three times in the morning and offered sacrifice according to the law upon the new altar of burnt offering which they had made. Uh-huh, come on. Look at what time and what day the heathen had profaned it. It says, and look at what time and what day when the heathen profaned the temple, come on. Even, and that was it dedicated with songs and silver and sir. So when we got the temple back, we rebuilt re re the temple, rebuilt the altar. Guess what we did? We dedicated it to the Most High with songs. Read. And harps. And harps. Guess who else played the harp? King David. Read. And symbols. And symbols. Come on. Then all the people fell upon their faces, worshiping and praising the God of heaven. They, they, they fell down on their feet, worshiping the Most High God. Why? Because he's the God of Israel. That's, That's right. right. He's not the God of the world. Read. Who had given them good success. Who gave us Eight good... days. Hold up. How many days? Eight days. So we keep the feast of dedication eight days. Not one like Christmas. Bring it out. For all y'all that celebrate Christmas, you need to really take every day of thing that you bought back and get your money back. Bring it out. Bring it out. Whoever 
to celebrate Christmas, you need to you need to look up the history behind Christmas. And once you do it, you still ain't gonna give a damn why, cause you hate God. That's right. Our people hate God. That's right. Bring you hate God and you hate His law. Read the feast of dedication. They kept the dedication of the altar eight days. And we keep the feast of dedication eight days. Read. And offer burnt offerings with gladness. With what? Gladness. With what? Gladness. That's why we went into captivity, because we didn't want to serve the most high with joyfulness and gladness of heart. That's why we went into captivity. Read. And sacrifice the sacrifice of deliverance and praise. We sacrifice the, the, the sacrifice of what? The, the sacrifice of sacrifice and sacrifice the sacrifice of deliverance the sacrifice of deliverance free and praise they deck also the forefront of the That's temple right there. we just wanted to show our people that guess what we keep and celebrate the high holy days that's in this Bible how you doing right. did you know you was the Israelite according to the Bible give me five minutes of your time Give me five minutes of your time. Can you find yourself on this side? Give me Deuteronomy 28. Start at verse 32. At the top. American black, right? You can't find it in the Bible though, right? But you can find Judah. You can find Judah. Watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 28 and 32. The book of Deuteronomy 28. Watch this. Read verse 46 first. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. And for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. So in verse 15, the Most High was letting Moses know if we did not follow the commandments of God, that curses was going to come upon us. So guess what? It said curses was going to be uh, going to be our uh, going to be upon us for a sign and a wonder, right? A sign is to identify something. Just like if you pull your ID out your back pocket, you're going to have your name, your height, your weight, your address. The color of your eyes, the color of your skin, all of that. So guess what? Deuteronomy 28, guess what it's going to be? Guess what Deuteronomy 28 is? It's your identification in the land of your captivity. Mexicans in the uh, northern kingdom of Israel? The Mexicans are there. The Mexicans, they're not, they're not created. They were, they were created with us. The Mexicans are our people. They're what black people don't understand. We have been conditioned and hated each other so long. We taught to hate the Mexicans, the Mexicans taught to hate us. They went through the curses way before we did. Native Who land you think this is? Okay, but who land you think this is? Who is ours? Who was here before this? Let me ask you something. Who land is this? Who is us? Okay. Who land? Who was her first? Who was we? The Indians. It don't matter what color they is. They are Hebrews. No, okay, you get it. You had it right. You said ours. They our people. Yep. Yep. Uh, give me uh. I'm not speaking. I'm not speaking about that part. Give me uh. Give me Genesis 49 and 18. What I'm saying. Watch this. The book of Genesis, chapter 49, verse 18. Come on. I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. It says, I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. This talking about the tribe of Gad, the Native Americans. Got, Come on. I got. I got. Gad, a troop shall overcome him. You know what troop that was? You remember Andrew Jackson and the Elf Troop? Yeah, yeah. Guess who Andrew Jackson got to help to overthrow the Indians? Yeah. A handful of black men. Yeah. Read. Really? But he shall overcome at the last. So the prophecy is, yeah, a troop was going to overcome them. But guess what? They going to overcome at the last. Meaning what? They going to get salvation too. Go to uh, uh, second edge. I understand. 
So when you say our land, you referring to who? The Indians was her first. Who land is this? You call it saying ours and you saying our, then you'll say Hebrew. But you I feel you trying to feel I feel you I don't think you think the Mexicans and the Native Americans are the Israelites. That's what you think. Yeah, because the Mexicans are a created race. How, how were they created? They were created. Give me Isaiah 43 and 23. They were created, uh, 43 they, they, they were created right. through the status breaking the native people here. They weren't created like this? So you think a Mexican. A Mexican and a Spanish and, and native, so called Native American, which they were. The native, Mexicans are they were, Indians. They, they were Indians. They won. What do you mean? What history are you reading? What history are you going coming with? Read Isaiah 43. Let me show you something. Now I'm going to show you who created the Mexicans. Give me Isaiah 43. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 21. This people have I formed for myself. These people, these people on this side, God formed them for itself. Read. They shall show forth. My praise. The Indian showing forth the most high praise right now over there on their pipeline. Read out, huh? They going through what we going through right now, I'm just dealing, dealing with the pipeline. The pipeline, but what I'm saying, man. What, what you saying is you down in your Mexican brothers. I'm at the I'm okay, at the give me that. The book of Genesis, chapter 49, verse 14. One thing about it, we cannot come with our own vain opinion. You gotta trust in the Lord. Because you, you saying, Spaniards, guess what? Yeah. We was overtook by the British. That's right. We was overtook Haiti, by the British. In Haiti, they speak French. In, in Haiti, they speak French and Creole. Yeah. Sure do. Why? Because yeah. of the French and the Portuguese, the Dutch? Mixed together. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But what I'm saying here. So with them, hold up, hold up. Let me, yeah. let me, let me tell you. Look. So with them raped and robbing us, guess what? That don't mean they created a nation called Mexico. Also got this. She was black Spaniards here long before they come yeah, up with the Mex Mexicans. Mexicans are mixed breed. That's the Spaniards are just that's white it. people, period. That's right. Well, they and they had. They had, they had no, look, all white people are the same. That's right. They right. broke themselves down to French, yeah, Spaniards, all Portuguese, Dutch. Yeah. When they just one nation of people, which are what? The Edomites. That's, that's right. right. And, and us, the they broke us the down day. into different nationalities, that's and we right. only what? We only one people. That's right. right. We only one people, and which is that? The right. twelve tribes of Israel. That's right. right. That's right. Because guess what? Em Give me Deuteronomy 28 and 37 right there. I've been showing something right there. Right. And we're gonna come back to you. Deuteronomy 28 and 37. Yeah. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 37. Yes, it is. And thou shall become an astonishment. An astonishment? That's a right. proverb. A proverb is being called something outside your nationality. Right. Read. And a byword. A byword. Among all nations. Hold up, among what? All among nations. all nations. So all nations. No, all these people right here are the 12 tribes of Israel. Yes, they know it and the but Jews over there not know it. And guess what they Them do? Them fake Jews. Give me Psalms Jews. 83 and 1. That's right. Let me show you what they, they did. They fake Jews. Give me Psalms 83 and 1. Yeah, we're gonna get that too. Yeah. yeah. The book of Psalms, chapter 83, verse 1. Come on. Keep not thou silence, O God. So King David telling the most high, keep not thou silence, O God. Come on. Hold not thy peace. Don't hold your peace back no more. Yeah. And be not still, O God. Come on. For lo, thy enemies. That what? Thy enemy. Thy enemies. Come on. Make a tumult. A tumult is a small gathering. That's what it is. Like they have with the UN. Yes. Read, and they that hate thee, they that what? They that hate thee, they that hate you. That's right. All nations on 
down there, planet Earth, hate you. That's Free. right, because Help you are children of God. The head. They lift up their head. Children of the most high. They are taking crafty counsel against their people. They taking crafty counsel high. against God's people. Read. That, that's right. And consulted against thy hidden ones. They consulted against thy hidden ones. Read. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. They said, come, let us cut them off. Right. Who is the them? The blacks, the Mexicans, and the Native Americans. That's right. Let's cut them off from what? From knowledge. That, for being a nation. From what? Yeah. For being a nation. From yeah. what? For being we a back. nation. We are a nation of people. God bless the you. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we are yeah. one people. And that are the Israelites. That's right. The Hispanics and Native Americans are, in the, are Israelites. God bless you. Hold let it get me to the room to 2831. Bring it out. Let me show you the Mexicans and the Indians are Israelites. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 31. Come on. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes. It says that ox, meaning what? Buffalo, oxen, bison. Guess what the buffalo was? That was the Indian's main source of meat and clothing. But the white man killed a million buffalo a year to starve the Indians out. That's right. Read. And thou shall not eat thereof. And we ain't get, they ain't eat thereof. Why? Because that was slaughtering a million buffalo a year to starve them out. Come on. Thine ass shall be violently taken away before thy face. It says thou ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face. Come on. And shall not be restored to thee. And it's not going to re be restored to you, meaning you ain't going to what? You are not going to get reparations. You blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you will not get reparations in the land of your captivity. That's right. Read. Thy sheep shall be given unto thy enemy. Uh-huh. And thou shall have none to rescue them. So the northern kingdom of Israel, they went into a slavery 150 years before we did. Meaning the Mexicans the, and the Indians, their tribes went into slavery in 1492. The blacks we went into slavery in 1619. We get tired of our people talking about the Indians and the Mexicans ain't the Israelites. Hell, they went into slavery before we did. <laughs> yeah. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 49. Listen to this. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. That's talking about the Spaniards. The Spaniards came against the northern kingdom of Israel. The Mexicans and the uh, Native Americans. The Spaniards. Read. From the end of the earth. From the end of the earth. Read. As swift as the eagle. Because Spain, they symbol was what? The eagle. America symbol is the eagle. Greek symbol was the eagle. They all are the same. Read. A nation whose tongue Thou shalt not understand. Guess what? The Mexicans and the Native Americans did not understand Spanish. Why? Because they spoke Hebrew. That's right. Read up. Because they spoke Hebrew. No, the Native Americans and Mexicans did not understand Spanish at all because it was a nation that they could not understand. That's why the Spaniards wrote all their peace treaties in Spanish. Free. A nation of fierce countenance. A nation of fierce countenance. Cold hearted. Read. We shall not regard the person of the old. They didn't care how old their people was in the cotton fields. Read. Nor show favor to the young. Nor they didn't care how young our young men was. They had babies in the cotton field in pimples. Read up. They had babies in the cotton field. But y'all want to love them, though. But you want to love your slave master. Give me Jeremiah 2 and 33. This one reason our people try to trim their ways to seek love, to try to fit in with society, to try to fit in with their damn slave master. That's why the black woman going over there to breed in weeds, getting that blonde ass her right now. You get a pack of women walking there, they walk out and look like a pack of nail ladies. Read up. Read up. Read. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, verse 33. Come on. Why trimmest thou thy way 
to seek love. Why we trim our ways to seek love? We trim all our ways to seek love. When we carry God laws behind our back to seek love in a land that do not love us. They do not care about us in America. They hate you. Bring it out. It's our time we wake up and understand that. Your slave master hates you and they showing you every day once they kill a black man. Bring it out. And we don't do nothing about it but turn around in the neighborhood and kill each other. That's right. Bring it out. That's the only damn thing a black man can do is kill one another. You both break 214 murders. 214 murders already. But black lives matter. Black lives don't matter in the hood. You've been taught to hate each other. You've been taught to kill each other. By who? Your damn slave master, who you think God is. Read what you got, huh? Therefore, hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy way. And our people, they turn, they, we teach the wicked ones our ways. Once you start to do these different things, you start to teach the wicked your ways. Once we try to trim our ways to seek love, once they start to see what we'll do to seek out love, guess what? We start to teach them our ways. Let's go back to do the run. 28, now read verse 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. It said the Lord gonna bring thee into Egypt again with ships, meaning slavery again with ships. Guess what? Before ships, the Native Americans and the so-called Mexicans, guess what that was doing? That was walking through the Sahara Desert. Yes. We were slaves up under the a first. That's right. Where well, they had our people walking through the hot desert. That's right. So when you watch those movies like The Mummy, when y'all see those people just chained up, walking through that saying, guess what? Those are our people. Bring it up. But we don't know that though. Why? Because we some selfish ass people. This black man just came up here and made it seem like all the damn tribes are black. He just made it seem like all the damn tribes of Israel just black. Give me that in Hosea. Ephraim. Seven and eight. I think it's seven. Seven and eight. Seven and eight. Yeah. Let's show him. The book of Hosea, chapter seven, verse eight. It's not about color. It's all about your bloodline. If your father it's a, a descent of the slave trade. Guess what? You are an Israelite according to the Bible. Read what you got. Ephraim, he has mixed himself among the people. You heard that? Ephraim. Ephraim is the head tribe of the northern kingdom of Israel. It said he mixed himself amongst the people. Read. Ephraim is a cake, not turned. It says Ephraim is a cake, not turned. Meaning what? It gonna be dark on one side and it gonna be light on the other side. Read. Strangers have devoured his strength. So let's drop there. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. Start at what we just left off. Our people need to wake up. Our people around here driving and worrying about Christmas. Christmas? What's that gonna do for your kids? Bring it up. When you ain't doing nothing but lying to them. We lie to our kids more than we tell them the truth. Because every time a holiday come around, guess what your ass doing? You are lying. Right, here we go. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So we was brought into captivity on cargo slave ships. Read. By the way of I spake unto thee, uh -huh. thou shalt see it no more again. Th thou shalt see it no more again, meaning our homeland. You think the Native Americans and the Mexicans seen their homeland again? No. Why? Because they were shipped to the four corners of the earth also. Free. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. The Native Americans and the Mexicans, guess what? They were sold into the hands of their enemies. Free. For bond men. There was slave men and bond women. And there was bond women. Read. 
and no man shall buy you. And no man can save them. Just like no man can save us. It's only one person going to save the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And that's black, the Jesus, the Christ. Read. Yeah, Luke 1, 6. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Come on. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. He hath visited and he gonna redeem his people out of the hand of all their captives. Read. And hath raised up an horn of salvation for us. Uh -huh. In the house of his servant David. And that horn is Christ. Come on. As he has spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. The most high speak through his prophets like he's doing right now. Read. Which have been since the world began. Uh-huh. That we shall be saved from our enemies. That we what? Shall be saved from our enemies. So we shall be saved from our enemies. The only person going to save us is Jesus the Christ. The black Messiah. Come on. And from the hand of all that hate us. It's saying from the hand of all that hate us. Come on. To perform the mercy promised. He to, said to perform the mercy that was promised to our what? To our fathers. To our fathers. Come on. And to remember. And to what? And to remember uh -huh. his holy covenant. And the most high gonna remember his holy covenant he made with us all the way back in Genesis. That's right. Free. The oath which he swore to our father the Abraham. Oath, he swore to our forefather Abraham. Right. And it went from Abraham to Isaac, from Isaac to Jacob, from Jacob to the 12 tribes of Israel. That's, That's right. right. Read. That he will grant unto us. That he, that he is the most high. Will grant unto us, the us is the Israelites. Right. Read. That we be delivered. Being what? Being delivered. Being delivered. Right. Read. Out of the hands of our enemies. Out of the hands of all our enemies. That's the good news for today. That's, That's right. right. That's the good news for today. Right. Give me Matthew 26. It's our time we wake the hell up. Come out of these philosophers. Stop celebrating these pagan holidays. Stop dressing like whores. I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.